carried the 229 for almost 25 years. I'm, I am fond of it. I was lucky when I retired, uh, the Air Marshals that I was teamed up with actually bought me a 229 Legion Series, which is a little bit higher end. I certainly have a, uh, a little bit of an emotional connection to the 229 because I carried it for so long. Every day I strapped it on, I expected to, to, to defend a, a, a protectee, a president of the United States or his family. And that and that's very emotional and it's very uh, it's personal. And then later on, uh, after we were attacked on 9-11, you know, the emotional connection changed a little bit. It became a little bit more personal. When I transferred um, to the Air Marshals in 2003, and they issued me the same pistol, I was grateful because I had so much confidence in it. When you get on a plane and it's just you and your partner flying from the East Coast in the United States to the West Coast or somewhere like that, and there's a chance that some terrorist organization got 14 people on the plane to try to overcome you, and you have a gun that you've been carrying for that amount of time, and you've been trained with, um, <clears throat> and you believe in it, then you, you feel like you're a complete unit, and you can, and I o always, I never got on a plane that I didn't feel like I could overcome any of it. When you carry something on your hip, on your right hip, for 25 years, and it sort of becomes a part of you. Um, especially when I became an air marshal because I, I was, I, I carried it in plain clothes and, and concealed and you get a little bit more into it when you get have to jam my giant body with that gun on your right hip into a seat on an airliner. So the Secret Service went from basically revolvers, Smith & Wesson revolvers, to the SIG 228 in about 1991, right after I joined. It was a good weapon, they liked it, but it was the 9mm and, and uh, there were, had been a couple uh, shootings and the service was a little concerned about the knockdown power of the 9mm. Even at that time, the 9mm round was already 100 years old, and, and uh, you know, it definitely had, it has its place in uh, combat and law enforcement, but uh, the service was looking for something with a little bit more knockdown power. The Sig Tower had developed the 357 Sig round, basically a 40, basically a 40 caliber cartridge neck down to fit a 9mm projectile. Government agencies can't really tell gun manufacturers how to build a gun or what they exactly want. But they can give them a wish list. The Secret Service gave Sig Sauer a wish list, and the wish list basically said, "Build us a gun just like the 228, but that can chamber the 357 Sig." The uh, slide is machined as one piece of stainless steel. They got rid of the double rolled pins that held the the, the uh, 228's breech block in place. It holds 12 rounds in a magazine, uh, with one in the chamber, 13 rounds. It's actually designed as a compact gun. It's a very accurate, reliable gun. And, and so my history with it is because it was kind of forced on me. That's what the, the agency issued you. And But the truth is the Sig Sauer 229 is a really good gun. Um, inside law enforcement, I've always heard, people always refer to the Sig Sauer firearms, especially the 229 as the Cadillac of guns. You, know, you can go and buy a firearm personally yourself and probably put, you know, a couple hundred rounds through it, you know, 500 rounds through it every year and it'll never malfunction. But when you, when an agency buys a gun, they buy a lot of guns and they put thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds through them. Good manufacturers, and Sig Sauer is certainly one of them, they, they find these breaking points and they, they try to engineer the issue out of it. And there were some issues with, with uh, from time to time with the 229, but nothing serious, nothing, uh, you know, it's just because of the amount that we shot in the Secret Service and the amount of um, ammunition that we put through the guns in training. Um, it's still kind of considered a compact. It's got a pretty good sight radius, which is the distance between the front and the rear sight. It has a double action, single action setup, the, the model that I carry and the model that the Air Marshals and the Secret Service carry, uh, which means the first trigger pull is a little bit heavier, between 10 and 12 pounds, uh, but it's, it's smooth. And then every round after that uh, is single action. That, you know, with 13 rounds in the magazine and, and practicing reloading, and when you learn to reload that pistol right, it's very simple, it's accurate. When I say accurate, I mean reloading, and then, uh, and of course, the accuracy of the of the pistol is, is very good. It's fast. They refer to it in the, in the firearms industry as a hot round. It's a handgun round that leaves the barrel at, at over at a minimum of 1,350 feet per second, which is very, very fast. We used a 125 grain jacket, a hollow point bullet, and it does devastating damage. I hope for the best, and I never doubted that I couldn't that I couldn't overcome this with that pistol.